Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another adventure into history. And today I am standing in this historic cemetery in Marion County, Georgia, because I'm actually here to clean these two graves. One of our viewers actually asked in the official Adventures Into History uh, fan group on Facebook if we knew of anybody who could clean headstones. So I said, sure, I'll do it. So this is Jeremy Moore's grandmother and grandfather, and we're going to be cleaning these up for you today, Mr. Moore. Dang it, I forgot the water to clean these stones. Ugh. Hey, water, bring the water. Quit fooling around and bring the water. You know, this is eight pounds. A gallon of water weighs eight pounds. And you got me toting one, two, five, six, six times eight, six. Five, six, you got me carrying a heap of heap of dirt. Don't oh. drop it. I dropped the D2. Oh, don't drop the D2. Well, anyway, okay, I got the water. What else do you need? A brush. I got the brush in my back oh, okay. pocket. Okay, you got the brush. Okay, uh, there you go. That's oh good. boy. Oh, by oh, the way, hold on. I paid yeah. a dollar. Paid a dollar sixty-five a gallon. Did you save your receipt to turn them in to me so I could give your money back? Dang it, I knew I left something at the store. If you didn't save your receipt, I, I Okay, can't. we ready to go? Yeah, uh, yeah, but hey. Um, what? Hold on just a second. Um, what? Di didn't you get the memo about the vest? You know, there's a dress policy. There was an now. email that you yeah, sent yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, and it, it says, says all, on. all people who appear on Adventures into History have to wear a vest now. All people, persons or people. Yeah, yeah who are on the Adventures in History must wear a vest, like That's right. your vest. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We, no we have a dress code. I was aware of that. Now. Don't you worry one so, bit. I mean, I'm sorry about the green shirt, but wait, oh, wait. Got the vest right here. What? I carry the vest with me everywhere I go. What? Uh, yeah. Yep, that's a vest right there. That's my pocket where I'll be putting my pistol in there too. Oh my God. Wait a minute. <laughs> This is the wrong color. It is. It clashes, doesn't it? No, it actually goes together pretty well, okay, actually. I, anyway. like it. I like it. Where's it at? Let's go to work. All right. All right, so here's the grave of Clarence Moore. He was born February 21st, 1901, and died February 15th, 1946. This is one of the ones we're going to be cleaning. It says, Sleep on, sweet one, and take thy rest. God called thee home. He thought it best. Then over here is Ladine Langley Moore Davis. She was born May 2nd, 1905, and died December 11th, 1979. So we're going to be cleaning both of these graves off today. I've got my spray bottle of D2. The other Robert brought some water. Got some water. And, and a uh, brush. And a brush. I brought a brush today, too. And a brush. I got a brush, too. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and spray these down. Got a lot of wind today. Yeah, we do. Don't want to ruin my good vest. So there's there's not a lot of uh, like moss or stuff that we see growing on these a lot of times. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray it down with D2, let it soak in there. A lot of wind blowing on it, you know. A lot of wind. If I thought about it, it would have brought me a cardboard shield or something to keep the wind off of you as you spray it. Maybe this will help you out a little bit. I don't know. It's supposed to rain today, too. And I don't think it's going to rain. No? No. Oh, well. Too windy to rain. The last time I cleaned with D2, the next day it rained, and boy, did it clean up. Really? Yeah. So when I do it and it rains, it doesn't clean it up. Really? That, that jug you gave me of D2, the one that had the seal broke on it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. Wait a minute. Was that actually a jug of water you gave me? The one of water. I yeah. mean D2, yeah. Yeah, sure. I, That's I forgot about that. Water down D2, probably. Sorry yeah, for stepping on the stone there, Miss That's a piece of debris that fell on there. Yeah. That's not. That's just a piece of debris. A lawnmower probably hit that. Yep. Let's get some of this sand off there. So we're in Marion County. That's right. This is more other Robert territory. Well, it's a sandier soil. It is. Fewer rocks than Talbot County and Harris County. That's right and less clay than um, down there in Randolph County and Terrell County where I've been doing a lot of videos lately. Because we're down in what's known as a coastal plain, correct? That's correct, below the Piedmonts. All right, so we're just gonna let this get nice and soaked in with that D2. 
and it's going to start working on it, eating on some of this growth in this stone. We won't probably won't get you know 100% today, but as this D2 continues to work on this stone over time, it'll continue until they look brand new. So there we go. We're just going to let them soak now in. It'll start minute. changing the color, won't it? It will. It should start changing color. In fact, you can already see it, I think, some right here. Yeah. And right there as it's pulling this stuff that's eating away at the stone out. Just Oh, that one's changing color yeah. too. It's already doing it. Yeah. All right. So while the D2 goes to work on this, we're going to give it some time to soak in a little bit. We're going to take a look at this historic cemetery out here. There are a lot of graves out here. Let's see if we can't find the earliest one. So I don't know much about where we're at right now. Uh, this is, uh, again, this is called New Providence Church here in Marion County, Georgia. And a cemetery has been established here since at least 1918. I see that grave there. And I think I've seen some earlier ones. Look too. at this example. This is a hand scribed one. But it's done pretty good. It, you don't think it's stamped, do you? I think it's hand. I think it's stamped. You think it is? That's stamped. Yeah. Robert E. Simmons. August 30th, 1950 to January 30th, 1951. I'm going to debate you on that one. Do you think that age is the same as that one? I do. Listen to you. With the some authority. with some wear to it? You think it's Okay, handy? I think you are right because, look, they didn't get the O in exactly right and it's stamped crooked. Yeah, and but it's the same exact same shape as that so one right there. So how this used to work is they had a wooden form, right? Right. They had a wooden form. They had little wooden letters. So they'd mix up the cement whatever kind this is i don't know what the mixture is on this pour it in there trial it down and then they take those little wooden letters and they would go either they had them on a jig or they did them individually i think these were done individually because of the spacing i believe you're some right. of the spacing is close some of it's wide so they spell it out with the little wooden letters take it off and let it dry that's right you remember uh did i tell you about i met a man in columbus six years ago that was still doing it oh really people. yes Oh, wow. Six years ago, he was still doing in the Porterdale Cemetery. Gotcha. It was cheaper than having a nice stone cut. That's right. Cut. So look and see what's in this cast iron. I think those are Confederate graves there. Hmm. Interesting wording right on this first one right here. I don't see that often. State Troops. State Troops. J.M. Blythe, Company B, 2nd Georgia State Troops, CSA. Now this stone is not a Confederate, is not a government issued Confederate stone, nope. but it's in the style of one. Right. And uh, it looks new. So someone must have marked these, or marked her relatively recently. This would be uh, J.M. Blythe's wife. His name was James Matthew Blythe. And his wife was Math Martha. McCorkle Tid, and she was born December 1845, mm -hmm. and she died March 1914. Now, at the beginning of the Civil War, before the Civil War started, each state, including Georgia, had militias. So I'm, I, I wonder, does the wording state troops mean that he was at one time in the militia, or did he join the service at the beginning of the Civil War? That's true. So that's a good question for someone to answer for us. The second Georgia State Troops, I guess it would depend on when that was yeah. established. Yeah. And look at the gate. The gate's still hanging. Hardware's still there. I bet that's going to be a Stuart Ironworks gate. Test me, other Robert. Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> you were right. All right. Okay. All right, and there's the shield for Stuart Ironworks. These must have come in on the railroad. Yeah, you could order them. And you could order them, and you could... I think they were... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they came in certain size sections, and you just bought them. And then you put them together yourself, or someone put them together for you. That's what I think. Now, I could be wrong. Here's another one. Is this a, a similar style? Well, let's look and see, because there is a hinge. It's off the hinges. So I'm not doing any damage, but can you see the bottom down there? I think that's going to be a different one. I don't think that Stuart Iron works. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. This is from Ohio too, but this is different. It's Champion. Champion, Champion Iron Fence Company, 
Kenton, Ohio. And you know, when you get in the older cemeteries, a lot of times this is missing. That's right. And why is that? Because if someone wanted it for their garden. Some thief. Yep. That no respect for the dearly departed. That's right. Now that gate's standing up just fine right there. So let's go, let's look at this way. Let's see if we can't find the oldest graves out here. So, this is newer. It would be right here in the middle. You think so? I think they'd be back there where it's on a hill. Mm. Cause you see how these graves are going down, yep. down the hill. I think that, there's the older tree right here. That's right, old cedars that were cut out of here. I okay. think it started up here. A different style of stamped. That's right. These are what we see a lot in Talbot County. In fact, you and I have seen a couple of them in Harris County mm -hmm. too. And they get worn down so bad. These, this is old, old concrete that stamped into. They even stamped that. Oh wow! I've I've never seen that. Well, they stamped that, that into the poured concrete. Sure enough. And originally, look, a field stone had Let's an original field stone, foot one. stone, foot stone there. There's not one up the front. You know what, Robert? Sir. I'm gonna have to grab my flashlight to read this. Okay. Tell you what, I've got one. I'll go get it while you, while, while I'm gonna get it, look at that stump and look at the field stone right next to it. All right, I've got one in my truck though. Okay, well I got one too. Okay, so I'll be right use, back with it. We're gonna use mine or we're gonna use yours? I'll uh, use mine. Cause mine's charged. Mine's charged too. My flashlight used to be the one you, you had. Remember you gave it to me to hand me down? Wait, I did? Yeah. Uh, that was a loan. A loaner? So here's this old cedar tree in the middle of the cemetery here. Someone cut it down many years ago. And it's interesting to see this style. This is more of that stamped concrete but a, a different style of stamped concrete. J.W. Green, born August 16th, 1909, and died January 25th, 1911. Mildred Green, born November 23rd, 1915, died August 16th, 1926. B.H. Green, born October 3rd, 1881, and died July 6th, 1930. And P.L. Green, born October 25th, 1902. Let's see what this date is. 37, February 7th, 1937. Right there. Then a couple fieldstone markers back here. Another one of these Talbot County stamped concrete graves right here. Well, let's go back to the one we were looking at, see if we can't read that one. What you see? I think this here says 1884. Is that 1884? That is 1884. So there we go. That's pretty old. So and so this would be the oldest spot. And this one right here is uh, 1892. A child. Is this a child? Nope, it's not a child. 1889 to 1892. That's a child. Yeah. Benny Stewart. Son of. Is that Gr? Is that Gr and Sally? McCorkle. McCorkle. Born October the 25th, 1889, died December. Doesn't have a date, does it? Doesn't look like it. 1892, McCork. I cannot read that. The, Let's see if I can read it. The sun is so bright. Let me put a shadow there, maybe. Yeah. Sleep on, sweet babe, and take thy rest. Now, you know, we saw the McCorkle name in, was that Pine View? Was it? 
It's real close to here. Pine View is on the other, not too far from here. Yeah, as the crow flies, it's real yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. Let's go look at this Talbot County marker and see if we can't read it. And I call it Talbot County Concrete Marker. That's where I see them the most, but I reckon they were doing it out here. So it ain't just Talbot County Marker. And you know that we're not that far, actually. If you go that way, to Waverly Hall is only about, what do you think? It's not that far. 20 miles? Yeah. Straight that way. So right. we're actually... Pretty close. Pretty close. We're probably, what, five miles from the old Federal Highway? That's right. So this is a, was a main thoroughfare when the settlers first came here. So this is in memory of, I think I gave you this flashlight. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's see, it's not that bright. I forgot I had to double click it. I think it's Charity, in memory of Charity, wife of James L. Lancaster, born in Holm. Can't. Comb. I see, but. Is that Macomb County? Macomb county yeah i bet that's what macomb, no, maybe. macomb. Like a, yeah i think you're right macomb county north, north carolina. carolina november 20th 1804 died in marion county georgia august 31st 1885 85 i'm guessing i think you're right so probably came here with the land lottery i'm assuming came here in 18 was it 1828 yeah, 1825, 1826. Something like that. Land lottery was either 27 or 8, I can't remember. Oh, the land lottery, Was yeah. this, was this, uh, was Marion County a county on its own or did, was it part of um, Muskogee County? No, it wasn't part of Muskogee County. It wasn't. You know, I don't know the answer to that, yeah. but I'm going to go with what you just said. Yeah, I think it was a county of its own. And then later on, they broke it up and gave some of it to Sumter County and, and split it up. And why did they break up all those counties? Why? Uh, tell me, Robert. More representation, the politicians, they wanted more representatives for their party. So if you had a big county, they'd go in and they'd cut it in half. And we got some representatives over here that the same political party. So we get up to Atlanta, they got all that politicians, got the people on their side, and they can vote things there for themselves. Go. I'll take your word for it. I, yeah. My county knowledge is limited to like Harris and Talbot. I can only handle so many. That's, That's I mean, why you're the South Georgia branch. Well, it's the same. It was the same there. You know, yeah. Harris County originally was part of um, Muskogee, Muskogee County. County and part of Troop County. Do you know where the original county seat from Muskogee County was? Tell me. You tell me. Waverly Hall. Really? Yeah, the original county seat from Muskogee County was Waverly Hall, Georgia. Waverly Hall. And all the records from up until 1828 are lost because they moved to Columbus and no one knows what happened to them. And what's the oldest building in Waverly Hall? The stagecoach house that was built by the creek as a stop along the federal Correct. road. Yeah, that's right. Before Columbus was ever before Columbus but a, was even thought of. Was just a riverbank. That's right. That is the oldest building around. Yeah, it's a little small metal one right here, to your right. This is a, this is an example of. This is an example of. Uh, are these petrified rocks? Petrified trees. Trees. They're definitely are, petrified rock, but. <laughs> I mean, is that what that is? It looks like it, doesn't it? It does. It's definitely a Marion County rock. Yes. There's different rocks down here. Yeah. I think high iron content. Uh, higher than than uh, Muskogee County, Harris County. Yeah. An individual with no gate. You'll notice that. There's no gate to it. And... And if you look right there, I don't know if you can see that. Is that a number? Is that a number on that part right there? I think it is, 117, yep. Yeah. So like I said, you'd order you'd order this product and it would be delivered. You'd order it in what is this six six foot section and a couple of uh looks four like foot. a four, one, two, three, four foot sections you put them together, standard That's size. Right. If you wanted a gate, you would order a gate for it. And it's no, still here. We don't know the in on the railroad. And we don't know the when it passed away, but we do know one thing. This is the old part. That's right. And these are fieldstone type markers. You know what I think? I bet that's even older up there. You think so? I bet. I bet it is. Let's go look and see. Because as we're going up this way, we're getting onto a more flat top of the hill. 
and more of those similar stones off in the distance right there. That's right. This ground doesn't really form indentions like no, it, it does. Doesn't. The sand, I guess, fills them up. Oh, you are correct. Am I? You know what? I think you came over here before I did. I looked. didn't. Look at the one to your left. Oh, snap. Pre-Civil War. Two little infants, Marshall N. Wilkins, January 23rd, 1855 to June 26th, 1857. Now, to be honest with you, Robert, I didn't think we'd find anything pre-Civil War out here. So I don't know the history of the church building itself. This is sort of new to me. We don't even know where the church originally was. We see some modern buildings right there. But that is old. This is David Leroy Helms. Born May 20th, 1835 and died November 2nd, 1863. Private Company C, 37th Alabama Infantry, Confederate States Army. I wonder if he died in the war. This is a relatively newer stone that's been placed here for him. Could but be. I wonder if he died in battle. He died in 1863. Well, He's Alabama Infantry. We don't really see that often here. Yeah. Good point. Maybe someone, maybe we can look that name up. I yeah. know a lot of people have uh, access to information that's right. about that. Now, these look older than they are. If, if I had not seen already this was 1890, I was think it's older, uh, much older, uh, because usually we see these really tall ones and they're pre-war. This is John M. Smith, born in Marlboro District, South Carolina, September 19th, 1829. Died in Marion County, Georgia, February 3rd, 1890. Aged 60 years, four months, 15 days. Asleep in Jesus, dearest one, we still love thee. But, Look at this, Robert. What? This stone was crafted by E.J. Miller. America's Georgia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, in this, you know what's so neat about it, though? It's 1890. They were still marking them up until turn of the century, I think. I think after turn of the century, they quit putting their names on them. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't seen them. Gotcha. I haven't seen them. So there's another really fascinating grave over here that I did see earlier when I wasn't looking over at dates on this side. Now that's gonna be this grave right here. And you know what? I found out after looking at these. Yeah. You know Dan, Dan the historian and yeah. Joy? And this is some of their relatives right here. This is Crawford T. Story. Company G, 3rd U.S. 3rd U.S. Volunteer Infantry, Spanish-American War. Now, mm. we don't see a lot of marked Spanish-American War mm -hmm. graves. No, you don't. So that's pretty interesting. Crawford T. Story. Hmm. Now, this is a whole line of stories buried here. Probably a story buried there and there. But it's not marked again until we get over here to... S.B. Story, born August 15th, 1844, and died April 4th, 1905. And there's some more stories here. Benjamin Allen Story, right here. Born March 10th, 1810, and died June 25th, 1882. And I believe that he was a brother to joy's jesse story if you've seen that video so it's interesting the family connections we find out here this is a bell belk the k yeah belk with a k like the department store born march 10th 1838 and died september 12th 1907 huh there's a couple more really these tall are tall yeah. now you know there's probably a couple of feet in the ground that's right they are tall yeah. This is in memory of Oliver C. Smith, who was born in Marion County, Georgia, November 7, 1855, and he died in Muskogee County, Georgia, September 18, 1882. He was only 27 years old, 10 months, and 11 days. At the bottom, it says, Asleep in Jesus. And his wife is buried over here. She lived quite a bit longer than him in memory of Martha Smith, wife of Oliver C. Smith, born in Calhoun County, Georgia, 
January 24, 1855, and died at Columbus, Georgia, May 2, 1929, aged 74 years, 3 months, and 8 days. They sleep in Jesus and are blessed. How sweet their slumbers are. Now, you know, they're both the same size, but I think that hers was placed here after his. It's a different type of stone, isn't it? If you look at it, it's that more granulated. And this is a more smooth. Yeah, a, a better quality. Yeah. And weathered a lot more on the back, chipped yep. a lot more on the back, whereas this one still has a good, a good finish and the uh, stone is not as quality as that one. So she must have made sure she got just the tallest, or whoever ordered her headstone. Family, sure. maybe there's another Smith laid to rest right next here. Yeah, Could have been Arthur, the son, maybe. Arthur C. Smith, Sr. Yeah. Born September 22nd, 1877, died October 15th, 1935. He lived a life indeed. This is a, a son, but not their son. In memory of Elmer C., son of J.H. and M.F. Smith, Born in Marion County, Georgia, July 21st, 1889, and died July 15th, 1890. Beloved and precious jewel of our hearts, we hope to meet thee at heaven's, in heaven, no more to part. Now, let me ask you a question. Her, her name, the wife's name was Martha F.? Yeah. So this could be the mother of that child. The J.H. And he was born in 89. And this is the father, possibly. Maybe no, that's Oliver C. Smith. Maybe she married another Smith. You know, back then it was kind of sometimes if, uh, if a brother died, the other brother yes. would marry his that's brother's correct. widow. That's correct. That is so a it could be something like that. M.F. Smith. We don't see, do we see a J.H. Smith? I see John M. Smith. But I don't see J.H. Smith. Here's a younger brother, possibly. Arthur. Is Arthur. Let's see if we can't find J.H. Smith. What is this Smith right here? It's in front of you here. It's L.W. Smith. Wife of, I can't make that, J.M. This is uh, J.M. Smith's wife. So here's J.M. Smith right here. J.M. Smith. But we're looking for J.H. Smith. I wonder if he's right here in this busted up. It could nope. be. This is another one of J.M. Smith's wives. Wives. See? Yep. Wife of J.M. Smith. So this could have been his first or second wife. Yeah. And this stone is all busted up. And we're not going to move it because there's a big rock right there kind of propping everything together. Now, you see what this is right here? This is These are stones, field stones, that were marking another grave. Right. This grave got all busted up. These stones marking another grave were just tossed over here. To help this shore one. this one yeah. up. And these could have been somewhere out in here where we're, pretty, we're assuming a lot of other people were laid to rest. But now those stones are no longer marking Correct. the other graves. Correct. Correct. All right, let's go see how this D2 is doing. All right. We'll start with this one. And, and you can see where it's already turning orange up there. You yeah. want the water yet or not? No, don't give me no water yet. Let's just let's start Get it all mixed this. in there good. All right, give me some water, Robert. Where you want start it? Start it up there. All right. Oh, yeah. Look, look at how that. it's running now. Oh, that's cleaning it up, isn't it? It is. It is. Don't get your vest dirty. I try not to. <laughs> Give me some water there, too, sir. More water. It's too dry. Yep. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Coming right off. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wait. Oh, well, gosh darn. Why am I the one I'm over supposed here to be doing, doing that, right? No, nah, I'm sorry. I got it. Give me a little bit down here on this here we go. dark spot. They wanted these dark spots cleaned off. so And the D2 will do that. Uh, when we leave here, we'll spray it down again with the D2, and it'll continue working with it until this stone looks like new. We won't get that amazing result today. 
Well, you know, we could rinse it off. Yeah. Let's go all the way down to the end, then we'll come back and we might scrub it again and rinse it. That's right. And then spray it again. Because I did bring two jugs of D2. Oh, did you? Yeah. You've got two jugs of D2? Yeah. How did I only end up with one? Uh, the UPS man delivered it to the wrong Robert. Oh. Wow, this this is lifting right off. This yeah. is actually I'm going to really put a little bit of water. Watch your hand. Yeah. A little bit of water right here and there. Yep. And I want to take a steel shot of this, too, because I want to do a comparison. Yeah, I took a good before picture. Okay. Before we'd sprayed any D2 on it or anything. Go ahead and uh, let's rinse that off up there. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> that's actually that's amazing doing a right pretty there. good job right there. i we didn't think it would come that clean today yeah, we got to scrub a little bit on the edges right there yeah but look how clean that's getting that's amazing right there and if we had brought my toothbrush we could get down in between there but i didn't bring my toothbrush with me the one you use yeah you like to brush yeah. your teeth yeah i left it in the bathroom oh. this morning watch out this water gets you here Wow. That's looking good, but I got something in the truck. What do you have? Hold on a second. You didn't get my toothbrush, did you? Hold on a second, Robert. I'm gonna scrub it some more. I like the circular motions myself. And I like to foam it up. See how it's foaming up? And the wind's blowing today. And that's one of the problems we're having. I wanna foam it up real good. Here, let me uh, see your brush real quick. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, what are you going to do? What is it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He brought the toothbrush, didn't he? I got the toothbrush. This is how I'm going to do it right here. Look. I'm going to do it this way right here. Look at those details. I'll start on this edge right here. I'll go all the way across and I'll come back. And do it twice and I'll come back and get the other side doing a pretty good job in it this is an incredible this is probably the biggest immediate change i've ever seen using this detail you know i experimented with the other cleaner you remember that yeah the other one what was it called wet and forget that's right did not have the same results as d2 that's right well you know d2 is the only one that's actually uh authorized by many uh preservation groups and it's the only one the national park service uses mm-hmm so it's the one I stick behind. Not sponsored, by the way. They haven't sponsored us yet here they on haven't. Adventures into History. No, not yet. All right, I'm gonna let that soak, and then I'm gonna move down to this one here. All right. I'm spray one more time. Look at that. Oh, the Robert knows what he's doing. I think I've done this before. Yeah, I think he has. Then we follow the letters. Get in between. I can brush my teeth. That's right. You um, know what? That'd what? make a dang good toothbrush, wouldn't it? Do yeah. you have another one? Uh, I'm going to take that one back with me oh. because uh, I don't want you brushing your teeth with it. See, that little spot right there is a problem. So what we do is we flip it around to the other side, which you got the small one there, and we can concentrate on that one right there. Oh, look at that. It's coming off, too. Yep. And right there, we concentrate on that one. That one's going to be a problem because it's down uh, corner right there. Uh, you know what? That looks amazing. And this D2 is going to continue working until this stone looks new, which is exactly what the grandson of these two wanted. Right, we'll start right here. But I had no idea we were going to get such a change today. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to happen that way either. You know, I'm getting vertigo bending over like this. Are you? <laughs> I'm going to grab my half a bottle of water and I'm going to waste it a little bit. Remember the time we we found that headstone, that large obelisk that was upside down. I do. And I was trying to read it upside down, and I almost passed out. Yeah, didn't we try picking it up? Didn't uh, we try picking that stone up? Yeah, we did try and pick it up. My back has never felt the same since. Okay, we're working on it. So I've got about a quarter of a jug of a gallon of water. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and 
Otherwise, you want me to get out of the way? No, you do what you're doing. And I just want to see, look at that, Robert. Okay. Wow. I thought all that was pretty loose now. Look at that. Well, let's try this right here, my little spray. Yeah. Thing on top. Just to see how it's going to look on top. See all the nasty just running down the stone. Now we can see what we've missed. That's right. I'm wondering. Yeah, we need to chase that water off. In the perfect world, we would have a uh, water hose, but not a pressure washer. That's right. You do not want a pressure washer. That's right. A lot of people suggest, why don't we come out with a pressure washer? And that is the wrong answer. It'll damage the stone. Let's see if I can't. Oh, that, that's not really clean right there. That's why. But it is now. But look, we can just wipe it with this. There we go. Look at that. Kind of spreading it around, but make it easier to come off, I think. And if it does rain, which you say it's going to rain. I don't know if it's going to rain or not. But if it does rain, watch your eyes. All right, I'm watching them. I got my safety glasses on. Will you uh, let me see that D2, please? Oh, yes, sir, right here. Thank you. Thank you, my good man. Let's spray off the side of this. Now, if we didn't brush it at all, yeah, we simply sprayed it, got back in the car, we went to away. the coffee shop, got us a cappuccino. That's right. Sat down. You buy. That's right. That's right. I buy. Sat down. Went to the oak tree, took a nap. Nap does sound good. Came back in a month or so. It would still be clean. It would be. Because the D2 works with the environment, works with the rain. It, it's a biological cleaner, so it gets in here and eats all of this stuff. And, uh, and the rain will wash it away. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead, while you're doing that, and just let this keep soaking in, I'm going to go ahead and give Miss Ladine another spray here. And if you need the water, I've got the jug right here behind me, I think. I bet she's going to clean up just as good. Now, one thing I will say is there's a lot of sand out here, and we don't want to work that abrasive sand into the stone. So just kind of wipe that off. It's hard to not get the sand on the stone. And there's a lot of sand in the letters of her name. So I'm, I'm brushing real light here because we don't want like a sandpaper effect to happen on this stone. Will you pass me your uh, pump bottle? Yes, water. Water's coming your way. Thank you, sir. Might have to pump it up once or twice. Oh yeah. yeah her stone's gonna clean up real nice too. Just get all that wet. So we're not sanding the stone. We don't wanna do that. Now I'm gonna improvise here. How are you gonna improvise, Robert? I am going to make me a water squirt bottle. All right. How am I going to do that? I I don't know, Robert. How are you going to do it? Let's see if this is going to work. Grandpa taught me this. Did he? Yeah. Grandpa was a good guy. He was all right, fella. So I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in this cap right here. You go. Hole in the cap. Let's see if it's going to work. Got the camera on. Camera's on. It didn't work. It, did. <laughs> it didn't work. It might be working. Look. Fell. It, I didn't make the hole right. You know what, Robert? It's not often that I get to say this. What? Grandpa would be disappointed in you right now. <laughs> look at the way the water's coming out sideways. I uh, see. I'm going to modify that, Grandpa. I'm going to modify that hole I just made there. Grandpa had a good idea, didn't he? He did. 
He did, but you know what? Grandpa's ideas weren't always. <laughs> they were about 50 years ago, right? <laughs> yeah, that, you know. Yeah, it's actually gotten worse. <laughs> Look. Oh, man. Ooh. Oh, you know what? Might need to put an air hole in it. So it'll really No, no, no. I should be able no. to squeeze it right out of there. Okay. Let's try the pocket knife again. I'll take your word for it. All right. Got to make the hole bigger. Didn't work. Well, it's cleaning up good though, isn't it? It is. You're doing a real. So this little job. pump bottle, I think I bought it at uh, mm, Ace Hardware for just a few bucks. Did you? Yeah. And uh, pressurizes the water. And that's probably what a couple of gallons right here. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's cleaning it up. Look, see, now that'll all wash off when it rains. That's right. And you can see where we need to, where we need to scrub some more. Now, see that mark right there I'm I following? Do. That is probably a flaw in the stone. See it? Yes, sir. Oh. Give my spray bottle out. Your spray bottle, which is a half a gallon. Yeah, my half gallon spray bottle here. And what? <laughs> <laughs> the, the nozzle's gone from mine. It fell off right in the back of the truck. It'll still work. Yeah, it'll still getting work. Getting some water on there. I'm getting some water out of it. <laughs> Look in the back of the truck, see if I can find the nozzle for it, maybe. The Hearthstone's gonna clean up nice too. So I can't believe that this church does not have outside water. No. It's got to have an outside water spigot. I got uh, two jugs. Do you? Yeah, right I'm there. I'm going to go fill up a bottle and just pour it on there. Do I don't want to waste yours Do like you that. see a... I'm going to go look. I bet there's a water spigot somewhere out here. And they may not have one. They might not. They may have designed it so no one could come over and steal their water. <laughs> they might have. They might have. So, now, but it's going to rain. And what we're right. going to do is we're going to treat this good. If we don't get it clean, there's someone right there. You can ask that man right there maybe. You want to yeah. ask him? Yeah, I do want to ask him, actually. Oh, nope. He's decided not to stop. Okay. Oh, well. That's okay. But our experience has been that it will clean itself without the brushing. But we're doing this today just to see what it looks like and and get an idea of what we've got here. And I don't know what's in D2, to be honest with you. It just says it works on masonry, stone, concrete, wood, asphalt, shingles, vinyl siding, fiberglass, paint, canvas, etc. And I'm looking for active ingredients. And I don't know what's in here. But it's made in USA, that's one good thing. I'm going to take my water now and I'm going to rinse it off what I've done and see if it does any good here. It's really cleaning the back up. That's for sure. Let's see how it cleans this side right here. Oh, yeah. That's a real good job on the side. We're going to scrub this one some more. This is a newer stone. Oh, yeah, 76. You can tell by the way the letters are cut. The way the letters are cut. Newer stone. Now I'm going to take the small brush and I'm going to work on these, these letters here right now. Let's work on them with the smaller brush, which is right here. Try and get down in them letters right there. Some people say to wear gloves uh, to protect your skin. I've never had a, a reaction or a problem with the D2. It's not acidic. Uh, I don't really wear gloves a lot. I've got some gloves. Did you find any water? I ain't never seen a building that had an outside water spigot until today. Welcome to Marion County. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No outside water because they're afraid someone to come over and steal their water. I was only going to borrow a little bit of it. Okay, well, like I said, I got, I got another jug right there. Yeah. And I got that jug right there. So you take that, use my pump sprayer. When it's out, we'll just keep filling it up. Yep. And that is... Distilled water. Perfect. I mean, there's no chlorine or chemicals or anything like that in it. 
Now again, this was just a, a chance meeting on social media. Yeah. And uh, a living relative lives somewhere around here, possibly? I don't know where he lives, to be honest with you. Okay, but... I, I don't... I believe uh, Mr. Cecil Young, who's doing the cemetery surveys, uh -huh. I believe that he took uh, photos of these graves for him, so he must not live nearby. Okay. Well, Marion County was a very prosperous county in the mid-1800s, agriculture being the main, main uh, source of income. That's right. Uh, it was... Quite a ways from the shipping port, which would have been Columbus, and in the, I think it was the latter part of the 1800s, they started bringing railroads through here. Yeah, 1880s maybe? Yep, 80s and 90s, and that helped kick it up even more, and then agriculture changed. The soil is actually a sandy soil, it's not the most fertile soil. Well, you know what changed a lot? Agriculture. What was that? It was a little bug. Oh, yeah. Called the boll weevil. Oh, Bo. Bo came to visit. You know, to this day, it's illegal to grow cotton without contacting the boll weevil eradication board. Correct. You have to get a permit to grow cotton. Correct. You can't grow cotton in your backyard garden. You're not supposed to, at least. Without a permit. I just got my permit for ornamental cotton. You did. Cotton. And you have to spray for... Bow wheels, are they going to make you put up a, uh, a sample trap? They come out and they put out a trap. They put up an informational placard, and I have to provide them access with my property so they can check their trap. Yeah. So the bow weevil put an end to the cotton as being king. It's, it's king now, by the way. Cotton is back here. But you know what? When the bow weevil came through, and farmers lost all their money and were forced to, you know, find other things to do, the timber industry came in mm -hmm. and bought those farms for pennies on the dollar. And that's why you see so much land that used to be farms that's now timberland. It's been timberland ever since the boll weevil came through. And where did the farmers go? They went to the big cities. That's right. They went to the mills, to the factories. Because they had good work, work ethics. And uh, the mills put them to work, gave them a job. They left the country, moved to the big city. That's right. And the boll weevil must have affected mills too pretty good. You know, all the textile mills that used to be around here. Yep. Never really thought Probably about did. that. Probably did. You know, we need to go to that town in South Georgia that has a big boll weevil statue sometime. Oh yeah, okay. Since we always talk about that little bug. I might have to pour some water on this like yeah. I did that other one. Yeah. To chase. Yeah. Chase some of this off. We're gonna have to make a point to come back in what, three or four weeks? Absolutely. After it's had a couple of good rains. Get right here, Mr. Robert. Go I'm ahead. Just He's getting me wet. I might have to, yeah, sorry about that. I might have to go buy some more water. I think I'm going to buy some more. The store ain't that far away, is it? No, it's not too far. Yeah, I want to buy some more because I, I want to see these get as clean as possible. And we need volume to chase it off of this stone. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to scrub it again. Yeah, absolutely. Scrub it again. And then... Now that one cleaned up good. Yeah, it did. Now, this grave is sunk in a little bit on the sides, so that's causing it to hold some water, but still. It'll perk down, on down the ground and- Yeah, that's right. It'll look better. Look at that. Look at Man, that. that looks good. It sure does. Take the empty jugs. Yeah. In case you can go find a place that's got water, like that gas station down there. That's a good idea. And I'll tell you what else I can do. I can give you that jug in this jug and where's my little small spray bottle this one here yep i'll put the rest of this in there if you want to 
All right, so quick update. I just drove up to Buena Vista, uh, not too terribly far away, and I was able to fill up all four of our water jugs uh, for free. Got at a gas station. Let me fill them back up. So we got more water, and I also bought the other Robert and Orange Powerade. I actually don't know what flavor the other Robert likes, but I know that he's out there very hard at work right now, sweating, because it's a warm day today. He's out there sweating in the sun, scrubbing away at that grave, just working away at it right now. Uh, there's no one that before I've ever seen that, you know, really works as hard as the other Robert does uh, when it comes to, you know, cleaning up a headstone or something like that. So, uh, you know, he, he works harder than even me doing that sort of thing. So I'm sure that he's, you know, really at work right now, really just scrubbing away on that stone and uh, just, you know, it's gonna look amazing. And of course, I've got the water, we can uh, rinse it off. I can't, I can't wait to see it and see what he's gotten accomplished. Okay, got bought one of the jugs of water and uh, I got a Powerade for the other. Wait, what? Oh, the Robert. What the, but you didn't get sunstroke. So you weren't working so hard you got sunstruck, did you? Robert. Robert. Hey. Hey. Mama. Mama hey. wanna ride the pony. What? Can I ride the what pony? What are you doing? Oh. I was taking a break. Uh you you're taking a nap? I'm finished. You're ta Oh wow, it actually really does look good. I'm finished. Wow, that looks Job's incredible. Job's done. Okay. Okay, yeah. Let's go get us a cappuccino and a steak sandwich. Uh how about a orange power rate? Ah, I don't you. know what thank flavor you. you drink, but that I, one will do. I it. wanted lime green, actually, is what I wanted. But well, okay. you know what? Give me that back. <laughs> so, this looks absolutely amazing. I had my doubts that this one would come this clean today, too, but it looks phenomenal. Well, the Robert's got yeah. his toothbrush. And you see the colors? Yeah. That's where it's working, right? That's right. That'll all go away. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to work spots. on these letters here a little bit. Incredible change here. Different kinds of stone though. This is a much older stone. You see it's got the little taper on it too? Yeah. Or is this one just a straight That's right. cut? That's right. We'll work on these letters a little bit. Robert, this is absolutely amazing. This change right here. Yes, it is. I know these D2 works great, but I, you know, it, on the first day, I didn't think it'd work this good. So we're gonna spray it back down before we leave and we're just gonna spray it on there and leave it. And that D2 will continue eating on stuff like this that's kind of hard for us to get on there that's really in that stone, all these little streaks in there. D2 will continue working on that until these are perfect and look brand new in the coming weeks and months. And I think other Robert's gonna check on it in a little bit. I'll come through in about two weeks probably yeah. cause I have to come up this way. There you go. I've been looking for a cemetery that uh, another person asked me to find for him, and, and it's a few miles that direction, but I haven't found it yet. Yeah. These look absolutely phenomenal. So I think last thing to do is take a couple still shots and spray it down with the D2. Okay, that's what we'll do. So Clarence Moore, February 21st, 1901 to February 15th, 1946. Sleep on, sweet one, and take thy rest. God called thee home. He thought it best. And Mrs. Ladine Langley Moore Davis. She was born May 2nd, 1905. She died December 11th, 1979. Ladine. Ladine and Clarence. Ladine and Clarence. All righty, well. We're through here. Absolutely. So I hope you all have enjoyed seeing this video. Amazing results today cleaning this up. Again, I can't stress enough, this is gonna look even better. Uh, it looks great now, it's gonna look even better. And uh, thanks to the other Robert for coming out, doing this with me today. Okay. And uh, we will see you next time on another- Adventures in History. That's right. That's it, we'll see you next time. Thank you.